your body. She thinks she's protecting them by hiding all this knowledge away. Our ally wishes to read this journal. We are taking the book. I'm impressed. Thought you were going to end her. When last we traveled here, after Fae passed, I killed an elf of great importance. The ramifications were dire for us. I do not wish to make the same mistake twice. appreciate our work here in the desert. I wonder if he knows how poorly this realm has fared in his absence. Aye. Hearing the Song of the Sands again is a rare privilege, even if it's only a solo act. Or a duet, once this hot goofa is free. This architecture... It is... not of the Dark Elves. An abandoned ancient settlement, I don't Built long before the Light Wells creation. More hard there as well. I'd say we're on the right track then. is sensitive to sound. When I last came here with you and Atreus, I assumed the absence of all kinds life was an aberration. covered by hive matter. Aye, and as far as the Dark Elves are concerned, it's that light column in the center of the temple that's the aberration. Just look at how old some of these surfaces are. Far older than the light well, or even our trapped half for for that matter. That's quite the empathetic perspective, Mimir. Well, dangle from a burly god's backside for a few winters, and you'll find yourself looking for all sorts of new perspectives. 
More hive, but denser. There you go. Rich on the left!
underneath the barons, do they? Territory changes hands often in no time. Most of the fears. Big Theo did mention that these ruins have historical significance for the Light Elves. I assume they're only here to keep intruders out. Well, at least they tried. I suspect the corpse below would disagree. That dense hive is blocking the way. There must be a way past. Good eye. Let's continue, shall we? Imagine it's a lack of fresh light that's caused this pair to grow abnormally large. No use in having babies if there's nothing for them to feed on. Trying to protect their children from a harsh world. I can relate. to comprehend the choice they face when it's free. What choice do you speak of? The life cycle of the Tafufa. In order to breed, they must pass on their life to their children. And without light, they will die. I suppose that's all any of us can hope for. That our death has a purpose. That we can live on through our children. Well, given another chance, I know what you're 
the surface then. Used in many of Freyr's blessings, I imagine. fate of these creatures. It reminds me of a story. Does it? There once was a blacksmith whose king commanded him to construct a box that could contain all the evils of the world, but no metal could hold its power. So the blacksmith used the flame. Kratos, is this a story meant to ease my grief? Perhaps it is just a story. A way to pass the time. I appreciate the sentiment, but... Your stories. What about my stories? I wouldn't exactly call them a comfort. Fair. Mumir is the better storyteller. Now don't sell yourself short, brother. You've come a long way from the days of laconic fables. It's okay. Finish your story, Kratos. The blacksmith's daughter was the key to unlocking the box. She died trying to protect her from those who would open it. Well... At least it's a relatable story. Years we've overstayed our welcome in this place.
I saw it, and knowing you did what you thought was best for your son's safety. Even these creatures know. There is little choice for a parent. You are not alone. <sighs> I'm not, am I? And now neither are they. Thank you, Kratos. This land sings once more. We've done good here. No rush to leave yet, is there? Who knows what kind of adventures await us in a freshly lit balance? I've always wondered, why was Freya so revered here so quickly upon his first arrival? Well, to begin with, it wasn't his first arrival. Very few know this, but Freya was one of the earliest visitors to Alpine back in the dawn of realm travel. Oh, but before my time. Can you tell? We believed for a long time that all the giants had died in the flood, until one of them appeared in Vanaheim. <laughs> Her name was Gerd, and she came offering to teach us the secrets of traveling between realms using Bifrost life. Freyr became immediately infatuated with her. He always yearned to wander, and along came someone who could truly show him how. So, wander they did, exploring the world tree from root to branch. But one day, it came time for Gerd to wander away. Freyr was heartbroken and resolved himself to perform some great feat to win her back. He set his aim on the grandest of gestures. He intended to be the first to find the elusive source of Bifrost light. And he succeeded, although quite by accident. Freyr believed he navigated best while fortified by a potent blend of Vanir herbs. When he wandered, he wandered. And he managed to wander from the World Tree directly into the Lake of Souls. The elves had never seen anybody come out of the lake before, so it got some attention. Oh, that is bloody hilarious. I don't know whether he worked his charms at that point or they just assumed him to be a great deity. But of course, he hadn't made this journey in search of responsibility, so he didn't stick around long. Still, the legend of his manifestation was passed along through the ages. It even endured after the Great Division, remembered by light and dark elf alike. So when at last he returned, he was uniquely situated to gain the trust of both sides and help to create a truce. The problem was, both sides trusted only him. So the peace could only last as long as he stayed around to keep it. And with the long war dragging on without an end in sight, I suppose making any kind of peace was an irresistible notion for him, even if it meant having to rule.
Light Elf architecture. It's massive. Locked. It requires two keys. What are they keeping back there? That's the beauty of a locked door. It could be anything. Monsters, treasure. No, in our luck, it'll be a bit of both. A token. A badge of honor. The elves made it. I was curious about some of the flora we'd encountered on my travels. And you will remain curious. It's not my job to teach you everything, Mimir. Look, I was just asking. And you have been told. Well, you can say that again. Brother, I had a thought. What if we took a stealthy approach to our next battle? No.
brother, in my travels, I heard of a great battle in your homeland, at a place called the Gates of Fire. The Hard Gates. You were there? No. Is that regretting it? I did regret not dying there for many years. But no longer. mentions a spell that puts trolls to sleep, and a magic relic that acts as a sort of counter spell. in botanicals now? Habit, I suppose, since I don't sleep anymore. Although, it's far more confounding that I'm the tired one. I've seen you stay awake for days at a time without so much as a drooping eyelid. Not even a nap. Gods do not nap. Oh, tell that to Thor. Heading back to Vanaheim? We still have unfinished business there. We still gotta find that mysterious orb for Lunda. And what else? You asked us to explore the river delta with you. Perhaps it's time we did so. I'm with you. I left something behind, near the falls. Your wedding site? Now why do you want to be going by there? To be free of the bonds of my marriage. And to Asgard. I think you severed that a long time ago. Not completely. Not enough. Guide us.
My people settled this river many ages ago. Thousands traveled it on pilgrimage to the Shrine of Worship. But then the Aesir came. This is my best Reavers. Of course. Anything interesting, brother? Hmm. Something hanging from that tree above us. 